Okay, y'all. Hey, y'all. I'm back for video number two of the day. I have one more to go. Um, again, this is I'm not gonna make a long video. Um, I just said the what's on my face video. Um, haven't even uploaded it. I'm going to make the videos back, 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 then upload them. Now, this is E Yama Fix My Life. Um, my life as a gay pastor. This is part three. So this is the conclusion. Like I just said at the end of my what's on my face video. More than likely, I will be doing, you know, the What's On My Face Sunday video. And then I follow it up with the Yama video. Disclaimer, my lips look really bright because of the lighting. My lips are not, it's actually like really glossy, but they're not this glossy. Um, okay, so this episode, episode three, you know, it picks right up where, um, uh, we see Tiffany, she's crying because um, Mitchell has told her, you know, I had sex with three, well, I cheated on you with five men, five random strangers that I didn't know. Three of them, I really, really didn't know them because I met them on Craigslist. So we see her crying and, and, and whatnot. And Yola takes her outside and she's talking to her and one thing I really say I notice about Iyama, like, really, she's really brutally honest with these people. Because she was like, she was like, look, you mean to tell me you did not know? And the girl was like, no, I, I didn't know. And so they came back in. Well, she let the girl stay. She let Tiffany stay outside and talk you know just you know sit there and meditate or reflect for a little while which she did shut down that's something that she does um she shuts down and i guess it's a defense mechanism um because she she's done it you know over and over again that when they get to a certain point where it really gets real she shuts down Okay, eventually, I'm going to skip around, y'all. Because I'm going to save um, Derek, Minister Derek, for the end. Eventually, she comes back in. And um, Iyan is like, is there any questions you want to ask her? You know, you want, no, excuse me, you want to ask him. And she's like, no. And she and Iyan is like, you don't want to know nothing. And she's like, no. So they they kind of let leave it at that. Tiffany did tell um, Iyan that. She did want some time. You know, she wanted them not to communicate. She she wanted some time. Um, which he said that he could respect that. Um, he can give her that time. Okay. Yana ended up going back like a month. Was it a month or three months later? I didn't write it down. And they was talking and once again Tiffany shut down but Iyama really wasn't wasn't letting that go you know bye she wasn't just gonna let her shut down because she's like are you mean tell me you don't have because she asked her again do you have anything you want to ask him and she said no and Iyama's like so you mean to tell me you don't want to ask him why did you marry me she didn't say nothing Y'all, honestly, I feel like she's in so much denial. I feel like because she has some low self-worth issues. And Iyola told, asked, told uh, Mitchell that because she, at one point she was like, why did you get with her? And he was like, well, I, I wanted to be married and I felt like she was somebody good. He was 32, she was 22. He was 10 years older than her. She already had three kids at that point. You was looking for a ready-made, as my mama or my mother-in-law would say, you was looking for a ready-made family. Meaning you was looking for that perfect, uh, you know, house dog, you know, picket fence. <clears throat> that picture she already had it and I mean in theory like let's say y'all you know let's say and I'm just using this as an example but let's say they went to a different city they said okay we're gonna get married we're gonna move we're gonna relocate and unless they told somebody 
hey, these are not his children. Nobody would have assumed that her first three kids were not him, his unless, you know, because, hey, they're in a new area. Um, that's what you would naturally assume. That's his wife. And so I'm saying that to say, you know, he pretty much married her for that picture, for that illusion of a heterosexual straight man with children, blah, blah, blah. Okay. This is what really bothered me though. When Iyala, you know, she went back, she was like, yeah, I've been told that Derek is upset with me because I made him tell Tiffany. I made him tell her everything. And I feel he, he's mad because I pushed him too far. He shouldn't have told. Well, first of all, how the hell can he be mad at her? First of all, I mean, that's number one. How can he be mad at Young? You the one that damn cheated. Also, don't she, don't that lady deserve to know that? Because in going out and having affairs with people he did not know, he did not know what kind of potential diseases he was bringing back to that woman. Because I'm pretty sure, hopefully you watching my video, you grown, I'm pretty sure they married. Pretty sure they not having no, uh, you know, they not having protective sex. They're not using condoms. Because, hell, she had done had five kids. I'm sure she had said, well, I'm done with kids. She probably had a tube tied. So, you know, or whatever. They weren't using no, they was having unprotected sex. They married. My husband and I don't use any kind of contraceptive. We, I mean, why? We married. I know he ain't cheating on me. He know I'm not cheating on him. She thought the same thing, only that wasn't the case. Also, with her, she said that she loved him so much that people would not come tell her anything because they knew how she was going to act. You never, you can never get to that point. I don't care how much you love somebody. You can never get to a point where somebody can't come to you and say something that now... If it's a mess, you know, if somebody gonna come to you and try to say something to cause confusion or um, or anything in your in your household, that's one thing. But if they coming to you and saying something to you that is constructive, that's gonna be between y'all, that's not gonna be messy, it's not gonna be petty. They're coming to you out of a love, out of a loving space. You should be receptive to that. That's just like in your in your own life, you know. If somebody see you going down going down a road and when you finna fall off a cliff, they should be able to love you enough to say, "Hey, you about to fall off this cliff." If somebody sees that in your marriage, they see, "Hey, there's some signs that this man may be cheating on you or whatnot." They should be you. Ne you should never get to that point. And, and she said, "Oh, well, it's you know." She pretty much said in a nutshell, like she kind of takes blame because. She got to that point and nobody could do say nothing to her about him. Now, what you cannot do when it comes to my husband, you cannot come at me and disrespect him. There is a huge difference. You can't come at me and tell me, oh, well, I feel like you should. No, 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 no. Don't come at me with no mess. But... If you coming at me in a place of love and you like, hey, this may not be my place, but yada, yada, yada. That's okay, but don't. So it's all about the delivery. And she, and I say that because she said it had got to the point where people couldn't say anything to her. Whether they were coming to her out of a place of love. Oh, thought I had some lipstick on my teeth, y'all. Whether they was coming to her out of a place of love or whether they was coming to her out of being a sister, a, a, a parent, you know, her mama, anybody, you know. Because I'm sure somebody saw signs. 
She did not see the signs because she didn't want to see no signs. But I'm sure somebody else did. Now, Iola told him that he was lucky that he had a good Southern girl. Because <clears throat> had he had somebody, you know, from New York or Brooklyn or Bronx or whatever city she used, she used a New York City, they probably would have jumped on him. Y'all, I'm, I'm a nice Southern girl. But I said it in the last video. He couldn't have sat in my damn face and told me he went out and had random affairs with even one damn person. <coughs> <coughs> Period. He couldn't have did it. I feel like with her, the reason she was so docile and just sat there was, like I said in the last video, hope was gone. She was done. She didn't care. Plus, I, I can tell she's, you know, she says that. You know, it said that, yes, they, um, you know, yes, they have talked or whatever as far as the kids and they can you know, try to co-parent. But she done with him. I'm happy that he eventually told her, I only married you. He put, you know, like I said, for that picture picture perfect family i married you you know to not seem gay i married you to try to avoid that um yeah them two i just feel like it's a lot of denial just like young said they have to have conversations which you know they have to have some hard conversations i feel like he is still in damn denial he still don't want to acknowledge the fact that everything he has done i don't think he can I, I don't i don't think i don't think he really can at this time sit down and acknowledge i have broken up my family i have changed drastically changed my children's lives forever like there is no going back and i feel like he is in denial about it i still feel like he is you could tell. I feel like she is in denial. She is in denial of the fact that there were signs there, but she ignored the signs. And I feel like really, if she really truly like, when it come down, both of them, they used each other. Because he used her as a cover to not be gay. But she used him because she was young. She had three children. You know, here he was. He was a man. Like he told told them, she went from being in the eyes of the church. She went from being a young single mother to being first lady. You know, so yeah, they they used each other. I don't feel like her use was not deceptive though. It wasn't to deceive him. You know, it was to benefit. She loved him, but it was to benefit herself as well. Him, it was deception. There's there's no way around. Okay, the only thing that I want to say about uh, Minister Derek is I'm just being honest. Um. I do not think that how he what how he came out and the reception that he got with his congregation was come a hundred percent accurate or um, not. Mm, I, I want to say staged because the young is not staged, but okay. Because the reason I say this is because his mother told the young at the church, you know. She was like, well, we talked about it as a family and we all prayed about it as a family. So we had a lot of friends, a lot of family that came to 
Um, we had a lot of family that came to the church. Okay. I'm, I'm really trying to choose my words because I'm in the South. We are still stationed in the South. And I just don't think that that many people, had they not been like family, friends, that type of situation. Because um, when you a family member or a friend, it makes it easier for you to accept something. Now, I just don't, I just don't feel like it was 100% accurate. I don't. Do I feel like his ministry is over because it is? No. But I just don't feel like it was 100% accurate. But that's the best way that I can describe it. Because like I said, I'm still in the South. I, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so that's all I have, I'll say about him. I just, I just feel, but I, I, I liked it. I, I feel like it is good. I feel like it's, it's good that if you are somebody that's you know you gay or whatnot then hey tell the truth i mean so yes i applaud him for it but i just feel like it was somewhat it wasn't a hundred percent genuine um the reaction because like he only said are you prepared that some people are going to get up and, and and walk out and they didn't show one person move. They didn't show one person flinch. They didn't like. It's almost. It's almost like. And I. This is possibly what it was. It's almost like like the, his mother said they had got together as a family and talked. It's almost like they had a hotline, and one person caught this person caught that person caught this person because there was no shock. There was no. You know, like, oh, wow, I can't believe that he is saying this. I can't believe that he's gay. I can't believe that he's coming out. It's like every, people were too prepared, in my opinion. I do. I feel like every, they were too prepared. Because you let me be sitting under somebody. I've been sitting under, you know, and... Even if in my head I'm thinking... He had a little feminine. I'm not going to just be prepared. I'm still going to be shocked if they get up in the pulpit and say, hey, I'm gay. I'm a black man. I'm a, pre I'm a preacher and I happen to be gay. Even if I thought it, I'm going to be really surprised. And I just feel like there was no real surprise. So that makes me feel like they had already been told. Not by him. Not by Iyanlu. Not by, no. By that hotline because you know come on now it was white people at the church but it was mostly black folks and, and we all know so so girl let me tell you before you even get to service tomorrow um who girl Reverend gonna stand up and he gonna say such and such such and such so i'm just gonna go and let you know i could be wrong but as a person who has lived in the South my entire life <laughs> and yeah, who has gone to church in the South, you know, yeah. So y'all, I'm just going to sit it there. You know, like I said, I, I could be totally wrong, but I'm just going to sit it there. Y'all, I'm about to eat these little dough dipper things because I had coupons for them. They are, they're good, but I just, the day ain't going to, how long it takes for them to thaw out is ridiculous because you got to keep them frozen. 
But as always, y'all, I do thank y'all for watching. After this, I want to make a quick little video, an army wife video. Um, yeah. Um, but I make videos strictly because I like doing them. Like I said, uh, more than likely from now on, um, with the exception of the Sunday at the end of this month, Halloween weekend, because we're not going to be here. I will do my What's On My Face Sunday. And then I'll turn around and do an Ayala video for the episode the night before. But as always, y'all, I do thank y'all for watching.